So we're here to talk about um, VB script, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, are you, who's using PowerShell today? Everybody, hopefully? Good, good, good. Um, so uh, how many of you are already familiar with PowerShell workflow? Or use it today? No? OK, good. So that means you'll actually get something out of this, hopefully. Yeah. Um, so, so PowerShell Workflow um, is, a, is a feature that kind of builds on some of, some of the core PowerShell concepts. Do you guys already write advanced functions? Do you write custom functions? You're familiar with the function keyword, um, inputs and output parameters, things like that? So PowerShell Workflow is, is very similar to that, um, but there's some concepts that kind of build on top of the, the core PowerShell concepts, and um, that's what we're here to talk about. So just to get started, uh, some of the requirements for workflow is that it was introduced with PowerShell version 3. So if you're running PowerShell version 2 today uh, on Windows 7, for example, you want to make sure that you upgrade to the Microsoft.NET 451 framework and then upgrade the Windows Management Framework Core package to version 4.0. Um, as you'll see at the bottom there, uh, you know, just a little history of PowerShell. Uh, XP was uh, initially allowed to install PowerShell version 1, then they came out with version 2. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing newer than 2.0 for XP, so make sure you upgrade your operating system if you're still on that. Uh, is anybody still on XP? Good. <laughs> That's the answer I like. Um, so then uh, Windows 7 originally came out of the box with version 2. Uh, you can upgrade to version 3 and 4. Uh, if you're running 2, you might as well just upgrade straight to 4. Um, Windows 8 came out in 2012, uh, PowerShell version 3.0 was included out of the box and unfortunately Microsoft decided not to allow people to upgrade to PowerShell version 4. Uh, I think there was a really big push to get to Windows 8.1 and uh, thankfully in Windows 8.1 you're on 4.0 out of the box. And uh, we'll see if anything newer comes out for 8.1. Who knows? <coughs> so. Um, once you make sure that you're upgraded to version 3 or 4, uh, you'll want to make sure that you're using PowerShell remoting. Um, are we all familiar with, familiar with remoting? If you were here two months ago at uh, Damien's user group, then uh, you probably saw me talk about PowerShell workflow. Um, it's, it's basically uh, Microsoft's method of deploying scripts and workflows uh, and utilizing other features like the Common Information Model, or WMI. Uh, through the Windows Remote Management or WinRM uh, service, which is a standards-based um, web service. <coughs> uh, additionally, uh, something to just point out, in the, in the context of PowerShell remoting, there's what's called PS session configurations. And by default, out of the box, you'll see that there are several different PS session configurations available on your system. Uh, there's a command called get PS session configuration that'll show you all the configurations that are present. Uh, you're welcome to create custom PS session configurations. Uh, it's beyond the scope of what we're talking about today. But I will point out that there is a Microsoft.PowerShell.Workflow session configuration that is utilized uh, by default when you uh, invoke a PowerShell workflow. So, uh, you know, one of the questions we should always ask ourselves is, why are we talking about this? Why are, why are we learning about workflow? You know, what, what do you stand to benefit from this technology? So PowerShell workflow, um, to be completely honest with you, has somewhat limited use cases. Um, it, it's really designed more for processes that have a very long, um, kind of a longer <coughs> running, or maybe there's lots of steps in them. Uh, maybe it's a process that needs to be repeated on a regular basis. Um, maybe for performance reasons, you want to parallelize some of those operations, whether it's maybe mass creating uh, Active Directory user accounts, uh, maybe deploying a script that does some sort of inventory process, like Damien was talking about before we got started. Um, you know, going out and inventorying computer information through WMI. Uh, any any process that you really need to be parallelizable is uh, a great candidate for uh, using PowerShell workflow. Uh, PowerShell workflows are kind of unique compared to standard PowerShell functions and scripts in that you can actually interrupt or suspend the PowerShell workflow. So you can uh, take a workflow, uh, invoke it on a computer, suspend it, and then reboot that computer, 
and the information in that workflow, all this state information, will be persisted to the disk so that it's accessible when you reboot the computer. So that's kind of a, a unique feature with uh, workflow. Uh, you could theoretically achieve similar behavior from a PowerShell script or a PowerShell function, uh, but you would have to write a lot of custom code to persist you know, your state information to disk and then um, you know, deserialize it from disk and um, you know, resume the process after you reboot the computer. So um, with workflow, you get that kind of automatic functionality, which is kind of nice. Uh, one thing you'll see here on the on the side of the screen is uh, you know don't forget about functions. You know workflows don't obsolete functions. They don't obsolete just standard PowerShell scripts. Um, functions have a unique attribute that workflows actually take away from you, which is that you can't accept user input. So if you have any commands like read host or uh, get credential or um, you know, even write host that uh, you know writes text or objects to the console. Those commands are not uh, available in 